Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all about the matrix section and what the matrix section is on the Behringer X32 and Midas M32. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, what is a matrix? A matrix is a summation point for your mix buses and your buses. So it's almost like an aux send for the aux sends. So we will find it located on our console on the right fader bank here. So we can see matrix one through six. And if we pull this up, this is our matrix section. We have six of them and we can combine them to make a stereo pair. So we can either have six mono or three stereo or any combination of that. So we can take matrix one and two and we can actually link these together. So we can actually just select it, press home, and then we can press link right here and that links them together. Now the matrix section is an aux end to the aux ends, just like I said. This allows us to take our main bus or our stereo bus or our mono bus and all of our mix buses of the X32 and it allows us to blend them together down a matrix. So like I said, it's a bus send for the bus sends. So we can take our channels and we can take these and send our channels to either a mix bus, which is all of these. Say you're sending it to a, a monitor or an in-ear mix, that's what you would send it to. You would take your channels and send it to a mix bus. But then for our main PA, we're probably taking all of our channels and we're taking it to the stereo bus or the mono bus. Now, you can also take these mono and stereo buses and send them to a matrix. Now, there's a couple benefits of doing this. One, it allows you to give an EQ curve for, say, your main PA. So I can actually take my left-right bus, send it to my matrix one and two here, like I'm doing, and I can apply an EQ curve for the room. But maybe I'm also feeding my stream online and I don't want my boxy sounding room to sound boxy on my mix. And so maybe I'm going to apply an EQ curve to my main PA to make it sound less boxy. And then my stream will still sound good. So that's the benefit of using the matrix section is we can make an audio feed that we plug into our headphones on the console. We can make it sound good in our headphones and then we can also tweak things using the matrix section to make it sound the same for our online feed, for our lobby feed, for our main room. There's a lot of options here. Now, one other benefit of doing this is say you maybe have some crowd microphones that are pointing towards the crowd on the front of the stage and you're wanting to combine those crowd mics with your left-right bus for online streaming. Well, you can do that with the matrix section and a mix bus. We can take those multiple crowd microphones, put them together in either a mono or a stereo pair of mix buses, combine that with our board feed of our stereo or our mono bus, and we can combine that together to send to our stream, and we can actually adjust the blend of that but we wouldn't want our crowd mics going into our PA, so we're not gonna add that to our left-right bus because our left-right bus goes to our PA. So let me show you how to actually get these things set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my console here, and I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch. So we have our 32 channels here, we have our six matrix sections here, and we have our mono and left-right bus here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is set up this matrix section for our PA feed. So, so for feeding our PA that's in our room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my matrix one, I'm gonna hit home, and then I'm just gonna link this. And I'm going to confirm that. And then I'm going to turn this up to zero. Now. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my routing section inside the board and change the output routing of the board to be from my matrix. So hit routing, tab over to outputs, and the default outputs on your X32 are either 15 and 16 if you have the full size, or if you have a smaller size board, it's going to be 7 and 8. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 15, and I'm going to change this. Instead of it being on main left, I'm going to go to matrix 1. And then on 16, I'm going to go to matrix two. And if you had a smaller version of the console, we'd go to seven and we would set this to matrix one. And then on eight, we would set it to matrix two. 
And we wanna have that tap as post fader. That way, if we adjust the volume of our matrix, it's adjusting the volume of the PA, which is important. The next thing that we need to do is we need to send our left right bus to this matrix section. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit home. I'm going to select my left right bus. So this is my stereo bus here. And what we can do is we can either tab over using the page select or we can just press view and the bus sends. And we can see right here our six matrices. If we were wanting to turn up our left right bus into these matrices, all we would have to do is take our first rotary knob and turn this up to either zero or anything that you wanna set here. So we can see that it is at zero and it is unmuted. If it does happen to be muted, you need to press this button. Now, one really cool benefit of this is that we can vary the amount of volume going to our PA using this knob. So say you have a mix and your left right is always about negative 10, which I see in churches all the time. Now, when you have this set like this, you're not giving a full output to all the rest of the devices down the signal chain. So if you are sending to your stream outputs from your front of house console, and this is sitting at negative 10, then your online mix is probably a little quiet, which is no good. So what you should do is you should turn this all the way up to unity gain, and we should get this back to unity gain. Now, what we can then do is we can apply that same negative 10 dB of of attenuation on our send from here to the matrix. So we can go ahead and dial this back to negative 10. Now, something that I like to do is doing this. I like to have a full mix on my meters and I like to push my board so that I get a full signal to all the rest of the devices. But I might not want it to be that loud in my room, so I will just vary the amount of volume on my PA using this trim here. Or if we also wanted to, we could leave this at zero, and then we could apply that attenuation here. I don't like to do it the attenuation here because if you had, a, say, a volunteer come by and they look and they're like, oh, well, why is this at negative 10? That needs to be at zero. Well, that's probably not a good idea. So I like to just apply it in the trim here that we have from the stereo bus going to the matrix section. Now, what's another practical example of this? Well, what we can do is we could add a subwoofer. And say we wanted to add that subwoofer, but not have an extra system processor. We wanted to be a, the ability of getting a good sound out of our PA plus that sub, and we want to do everything in this board, which is cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the matrix one and two, we're just gonna label them. So we're gonna go to name and icon and we're going to title this and this is going to be PA. So we can now see that I have matrix one and two labeled PA and we'll just go ahead and change the color of these so we can have fun here. And then on matrix three, I'm going to label this sub. Now that we have these things labeled, we need to send our left right to this subwoofer send. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go back to home and go to view, and we're just going to take our level three here and turn it up to zero. Now likewise, if you're using your mono section for your subwoofer send, you could go and select your mono and go ahead and turn this up to zero as well on our matrix three. So now we have our mono bus and our stereo bus going to matrix three. And we also have our stereo bus going to matrix one and two, which is our main PA. Now the cool thing about these matrix sections is that Behringer has released crossover filters inside of the X32 that we can apply to these matrix sections. We can go ahead and turn on our EQ, and then on our low band, we can go to our mode, and we can actually rotate this to the right, and we can see all of these different types of crossover frequencies that are available to us that are actually system crossover filters. So we can set this to an LR24, and then on our subwoofer, we can also set the high band as an LR24. Go ahead and turn this on. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to rotate this all the way down to 100 hertz. 98 is close enough. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our matrix section and set this low band to 100 hertz as well. So what we have done is we have created a crossover within the board. So we're taking our left-right bus or our stereo bus, we're sending it to these three 
matrices, and then we're applying a crossover to these outputs. So anything that's going to my main PA has the low end rolled off at the correct spot, and then anything that's going to my subwoofer has the high end rolled off at the correct spot. So we can see that these two things have the same crossover point. And because we're using the LR24, we don't need to separate the frequencies. So there's no math that we have to do on what frequency to put for our high pass, what frequency to put for our low pass. With the LR crossover frequencies, we can set the frequency to the same on all of them. So this is going to send our subs to just the subwoofer and our mains minus sub to the mains. So this is a really cool way of being able to have really clean audio coming through your mains and having the subwoofer energy coming from the subs. And so now we just have to route our matrix three to our outputs to plug in our subwoofer two. So go ahead and hit routing, go to out, and then I would suggest using six and we'll just go ahead and select matrix three. And then down here for a full size, I would go to 14 and I would select matrix three. Make sure that's on post fader. That way if I vary this volume up and down, that it actually happens. So we now have all of our audio coming from our channels going to our left, right, and then going to our matrix section, which is processing the audio to send to the PA and the subwoofers. This is super helpful for us. Now, like I was saying, is you can also send a mix bus to the matrix section. So if we go and select a mix bus and hit view, we will notice these six matrices available to us on any of these mix buses. All of them are this way. But we can't go to a channel because channels can't go to the matrix section on the Behringer X32. I wish they did, but they don't. That's okay. So we have these channels and they can go to the mix buses and then our mix buses or our stereo or mono bus can then access the matrix section. You're probably wondering, how do I utilize the matrix section on the X32? Well, I have all my channels and those then go to the left, right, and then that left, right, and mono then get sent to the PA. And I use the matrix section for my PA, my subwoofer, my mono, and my stream outputs. So I have matrix one and two set as my main PA. I have my matrix three for my subwoofers, my matrix four as a mono output, because there's always some person that needs to video record something, and you can just give them one XLR and say, here you go, here's the full mix. And then lastly, I have my stream left and right out coming from my matrix five and six. So what I do is I take my left, right, and I send it to all of these things. Now, a couple other things that I set this up to do is I have my main PA with an EQ curve, and I will leave this turned off at the start uh, when I take this into a brand new room. And so this is, this is my show file. But I'll leave this EQ off until I'm in the room and seeing what I actually need to do. And so, but what I do have is I have that LR24 set at the correct frequency that I always have it set to, just in case I want to go ahead and give that low end roll off on the main PA and then get those subwoofers a chance to get all of that low end pushing through. So we can see that I have my main PA here, and if I wanted to have these doing the main and the subwoofer send, I have those that set there. Then I have a mono out that has all of my things going and summing to mono, and then I have my stream output, which is hitting my online stream. If you haven't checked out my online streaming video, make sure to go check that out because it's pretty cool. So this is how I use the matrix section. I hope that this is super helpful for you in learning what the matrix section is and how it's going to be beneficial for you to actually use it. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below. And if you have any videos that would be super helpful for you if I made them, go ahead and put those requests down in those comment sections as I'm always looking through those to find the next video that's gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't checked out my website, it's at drewbrashler.com. And please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. Thank you so much.